What could possibly link Ted Hughes's Jaguar to cinematic blockbusters like The Matrix, Fight Club and V for Vendetta? Let's take a look. To give you a clue, here's the shaven-headed Neo climbing from his embryonic pod and here's Tyler Durden blowing up his IKEA condo. He too will have short hair shortly. And here's Evie fresh-faced from captivity, also lacking hair. So is freedom shaving your head? Don't be silly. Let's take a closer look at how Hughes represents freedom in the Jaguar. Here we are, in our boxes, just like animals in captivity. Hughes describes animal behaviour in the first two stanzas as unnatural. The apes yawn and adore their fleas in the sun. Like the big cats fatigued with indolence, yawning suggests utter boredom. The only thing these apex predators are going to eat is themselves. Fleas are parasites. The apes adore them implies a perverse relationship, not unlike the parrots behaving like cheap tarts to attract the stroller with the nut. In other words, they're begging for food. Tip of the hat to Hughes here for his alliteration of strut and stroller, emphasising the connection between the parrots and the passerby. If the parrots are prostitutes, then the passerbys are Johns. Hughes uses an ABBA rhyme or half rhyme scheme to suggest confinement. No free verse for these beasts. In verse 2, Hughes increases the terror of the captivity. The animals are not just bored, they're dead and buried. The boa constrictor's coil is a fossil. A fossil was once alive, not anymore, just like the snake. And cage after cage seems empty. Not only are the animals emotionally or spiritually absent, now they appear physically absent too. Hughes' use of irony in breathing straw suggests the bedding is more alive than the animals. And he ends the verse with, it might be painted on a nursery wall. These apex predators are so docile, so lifeless, the image wouldn't frighten a baby. Verse 3 represents a transition from captivity to the jaguar. The previous predators are not worth a glance. Crowds have run past them. Hughes contrasts runs with the behaviour before the Jaguar's cage. Stands, stares, mesmerised. The list of three becomes progressively enthralling. And what is it that captivates them? The power and the aggression of the Jaguar. It's like watching Rafa Nadal play tennis on Mike Tyson box. Here's an animal in touch with its predatory instincts. The prison might be dark, but its eyes drill beyond captivity. In verse 4, Hughes uses explosive imagery and plenty of alliteration to emphasise the power and the passion of the Jaguar. He's on a short, fierce fuse, the bang of blood, blinding fire, and the stanza ends with, there's no cage to him. This isn't Zimbardo's Stanford prison experiment where jailers and prisoners conform to their roles. The Jaguar shows none of the depressive behaviour associated with captivity. Quite the reverse, in fact. And in the final stanza, Hughes answers the question, what is freedom? Freedom is out of captivity. Freedom is Neo seeing through the matrix, Tyler Durden blowing up his Ikea condo, and Evie walking free from prison because she's no longer afraid to die. It's overcoming the restrictions placed upon you. In this stanza, the visionary might be in his cell, but he sees a future not yet manifest. The Jaguar is not mentally captive, and because of that, the whole world rolls under his heel and over the cage floor the horizons come. So what is freedom according to this point? It's a state of mind. We're only as free as we allow our minds to be. And if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. And if you want to boost your English literature grades, then click the link in the description box below for my online Hughes course. It explores the big issues behind each point and will give you the tips, the techniques and the examples necessary to achieve A-star. See you soon.